Hey everybody, this is Andy Roy from Pops Knife Supply. I'm here today with my favorite tool in the shop. I've told people this before, it's the surface plate and the tools with it. Uh, I like to use this before anybody's here in the mornings and there's just a quietness to the shop and a peacefulness. And this thing, if you hear, you can hear the little sounds that the knife, the blade makes as it comes on and off of the plate here. So I just love this tool. In addition, this tool doesn't lie. It tells you the truth about your knives that you may or may not want to hear. If your knife is warped, you're never going to get a single line on both sides of this knife. But I'm just going to show you a couple of things I do with it. And the reason I'm at this tool at this station showing you this today is because Pops now carries a height gauge. Just like this one. It's a little, it's not a mid oyo or anything like that. Uh, it's a efficient, low cost height gauge. But if you're marking your center lines with some little monkey jig with, uh, with a nail in it that you put in the vise, you're, you're not ever gonna have accuracy and you're gonna be wasting your time. In addition, you're running it over a tiny little thing so it doesn't tell you the truth about your knife that this plate and this measuring tool give you. So uh, this here is a little, little full thickness tang knife that I'm doing. It's after heat treat. So after heat treat, I'm only gonna do really one thing with a height gauge, and that is to put a line straight down the center. And this is, as you can see, before I've done any after post heat treat grinding at all. So I'm gonna measure the thickness of the knife. That came 96. That came 98. That came 98, so I always go with the one that I get multiple readings of, as soon as I get a multiple reading. So half of 98 is 49. So I'm gonna set it to 49 thousandths. Gotta put my glasses on. Peter Kohler says I look old, but uh, I got that for you, Peter Kohler. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I put it at 49 thousandths here, and I'm gonna make a line down the one way, and then I'm gonna flip the blade and make a line the other way. Now you'll notice my handle is hanging off the plate. That's because if there's a tiny bit of warp way back here, I don't care. I'm a knife maker. A little bit of warp's okay. I can, I've already done the knife maker super challenge. I sight down the blade, it looks straight enough. So I don't need to be told that if I put the whole thing on there, it's not quite, it's not quite totally straight. So I've just got the blade on. I do it from both sides. I come out with one, one line down the center that you're never going to be able to see on that thing. But it came one line down the center back here. And then here, I've got a little bit of two lines. That means the blade has just a little bit of warp in it. That's fine, I'm gonna grind that out when I'm grinding my blade anyway. But now I know where that is. I always also do it on the spine. Same thing. And that way when I'm grinding and I wanna make sure my tip stays in the center and you kinda of got a little cross-eyed and you're looking at your edge and you're dying over whether everything's straight and everything's in the middle, uh, I can always look at the back and make sure I know right where I am. So that's what I do after heat treat with it. Uh, the reason you don't want to buy a real expensive height gauge is because this is hardened steel. It, this uh, tip on one of these height gauges is carbide, but it still wears out. So we go and we sharpen it at the belt. And we only sharpen on the top. That's very important. This is your measuring surface. So we sharpen it from the top with the, uh, every few weeks at the belt and in between sharpenings with a diamond home we keep right here next to the plate. Um, and that helps us get nice crisp, crisp lines. Uh, we put a lot of wear and tear on a height cage as a knife maker. It's not like we're a man, uh, machinist and we're scribing, you know, brass or soft, soft metals or anything that wouldn't just eat this thing to, to hell and back. What we do basically destroys them. This one and the one we sell at Pops has a removable carbide insert. So when it gets pretty old, yeah, we can throw this out and buy, and buy a replacement and keep going with this machine. Fact of the matter, matter of the fact is, we make a lot of dust. We're blowing the shop out all the time. I still don't want to get a mid oyo because I just don't want to spend the money on it. This one is accurate enough for the thing. And as it gets knocked over and blown over and everything that happens in a shop, I have employees. So 
it's not just that I can come in and be uber responsible in my shop. There's all kind of people in here banging my stuff up. But we sell it at Pops. It's just an easy peasy. Dirt, do you remember what we uh, charge for that right now? You know, we don't have the price on it right now, but go check it on the website. We've sold a whole bunch in the last couple of days. Don't fill around with those little jigs. Get yourself a piece of granite. You'll love the you'll love the peaceful sounds the knife makes as it touches and comes off of the thing. And having a height gauge means you have a real shop. You're not just some gump, some playing at being a knife maker guy. You, you're trying to be accurate about what you're doing. This is the most honest thing in, in your in your shop. Even more honest than your wife. So you guys have a great day. Thanks a lot. Check out the height gauge. We sure like doing this stuff for y'all and I hope you're having fun making knives.